So hi everyone, my new book Lanchin in your pocket, beginner's guide to building Gen A applications using LLMs is out now on Amazon. The book is already a bestseller. As you can see, it is trending on hash three on Amazon bestsellers. So go get, grab your copies and find the link in the description below. So hi everyone. Today we will be talking about how you can improve your RAG results using LangGraph and LangChain. So LangGraph is a new extension of LangChain which supports acyclic graphs. So I'll be telling about that in this particular video and then how you can improve RAG. By improving RAG, we mean that we, uh, we want to have an answer that meets a particular quality, a particular check that we want to have. Until unless that check is not meant, uh, that uh, is not met, uh, we would be doing RAG again and again internally so that we finally get an answer that meets our criteria. So by improving RAG, I mean that. So let's get started. So I'm assuming that if you're jumping onto LAN graph, you already know about what are chains and agents. If you don't, you can go back to my previous videos or read this particular description, the short description in this video by pausing this. I would be jumping over chains and agents as I've already explained them in detail in my previous videos. Now coming to LAN graph. So as I already told you, assume this particular example. I wish to build a rag based retrieval system over a knowledge base, right? Now you wish to introduce such a case that if rag output is not meeting a particular quality. In this particular example that I would be demonstrating, I would be showing that I want to have a short answer. The agent slash chain should again retrieve the data, but with a change in the prompt this time. Now this particular logic that I'm talking about, uh, re retrieval of data by changing the prompt should happen internally and I should not be doing it. So this is where LangGraph would be coming in. So very clearly LangChain documentation has mentioned where you want to have cyclic things happening. The LangGraph can be a big game changer. And why LangGraph is becoming a popular because you must be hearing about packages like Autogen, MetaGPT, Creo AI. So basically these, these packages are multi-agent conversational packages where eventually you give a task and the particular package creates multiple agents that interact within themselves. Like for example, you give a task to design a product. So eventually the particular package will create multiple uh, sub agents like product manager, technical manager internally. They will be having conversations and then giving you a final output. Similarly, LangGraph can be used to build uh, the same multi-agent conversations as well. But in this case, you will be demonstrating how you can improve your rack quality. So let's get started. So as I already told you, the quality criteria that I'm mentioning here is that I want to have the answer which is less than 30 characters. If the output is greater than 30 characters that I'm receiving from my rag, I wish to introduce a cycle to use a different prompt such that the prompt runs again and again until unless the, I, the criteria is not meant. So let's get started. Do remember to use the versions that I've mentioned here else because LangChain is under rapid development and they and there might be cases where the code might break. So let's get started. First of all, we'll be importing a few important packages as you can see here from LangGraph basically and uh, some from LangChain. LangChain basically the LLM and the embedding part and the retrieval QA chain to create our RAG framework. Now the con I will be uh, explaining you about the different components of LangGraph as well within this example. So the most important uh, component of LangGraph is state graph. So state graph can be taken as a list of variables uh, which can store values and which can be used around throughout the execution. So basically here you can see that I'm using five variables here. Question, classification, response, length, greeting. So these five variables can be used across the graph, across the execution whenever I wish to use it. I will be showing you how. Just remember that it is a list of variables and can be more. In this example, I'm keeping it simple. A list of variables which can store information for you throughout the execution process. As I am mentioning here, it is the heart of any line graph flow. Now, next part is I would be creating a rag retrieval chain. I won't be jumping into the code because I have already explained these codes in my previous videos. But just for uh, in short, I am creating embeddings here, declaring my uh, vector DB and then using the retrieval QA chain over an existing database that I have got. So persist directory is basically used for loading an existing vector DB. You can check this out in detail in my previous videos on how to do multi-document RAG and how to use a RAG with persistent DBs. So here I have created a vari uh, variable called as RAG chain which is a retrieval QHA. 
so we have first of all created states as you remember five variables now we'll be creating nodes for this graph so nodes for this graph basically are in form of functions that can update the values and read the values of state variables that you have saw, uh, seen earlier so here in this particular case we would be adding four nodes one is classify input node so here you can see that state dot get question so it is first of all reading the value of question variable that i've set in the state in this particular case as you can see which is none initially then i'm calling the classify function which is uh, uh, at the top which is helping me to classify whether the intent of the input is greeting or non greeting i'll be telling you the whole process or uh, once i'm uh, reach i reaches that particular point then I'm updating the value of the classification variable depending upon the classification that I've got. So classification will be having two values, greeting or non-greeting. Now the next node that I'm adding is handle greeting node. So if uh, uh, in this case, I'm updating the value of the greeting variable as hello, how can I help you today? The third one is the handle rag. Basically in this case, what I'm trying to do, I'm reading the length variable. And if it is less than 30, I'm running the prompt the default prompt that I'm sending else I'm running the prompt dot return total count only so to reduce the rack size so basically I would be asking how many projects I have done so if the first case runs it will tell you the name of the projects if the second case run it will give you a count ki, okay this guy has done three projects now in this case I'm updating the value for two variables response which is the result for rack and length which is the length for the result that I've got and the fourth node is by greeting the graph has finished. I will tell you in the whole flow in the end. So here I've added four nodes into this graph classify input, which gives you a classification as a greeting, non greeting handle greeting, which gives you an output as hello. How can I help you today? Handle rack, which helps you with the in, uh, implementing the logic that I've already told you. If the length is less than 30, use this else use this prompt and a by node, which again gives you the graph has finished updating the value for greeting so every node in the python function which can read any state variable update any state variable and you can i have already explained these points to you you can have a read next we'll be adding entry points and edges so entry point is basically the first node that gets executed uh, irrespective of whatever the prompt is and the different edges so in a graph what are the different components we have got nodes we have got states we have got edges between nodes so just try to imagine a graph. So the first, uh, the entry point for the graph is the classify input. So whatever the prompt goes, this is the first function that would be running. That is classify input node. So we first, we first of all wish to classify the prompt that we have got as greeting or non-greeting. I think that should be clear. Now adding edges. So handle greeting end and by end. So this particular end, end is a special type of node provided in Lang graph, which indicates that the graph has finished so whether we hit whether we get the node as handle greeting or by if we reach to these two nodes the graph ends then and there this means that now let's add conditional edges so this is the best part and this is the most complex part to understand so basically in uh, conditional edges what we are mentioning uh, from a given node when we don't know on which next node we can go so in this case we would be mentioning depending upon the logic which node to be chosen at a given node so in the previous case add edges it is very clear that if you ha hit handle greeting the next node is edge this is a definite node this is a definite edge in conditional edge we would be following a function and depending upon the value of the function we would be choosing a particular node so the first conditional edge that i'm adding is classify input classify input is basically the first function once we have classified the input and then I'm calling the decide next node function. So here you can see that there is a condition in this particular function. Return handle greeting if state dot get classification equals to greeting else handle rack. So this basically means that if the classification variable has the value greeting as I already told you that the classify function that I was using can give you output as greeting or non greeting. If the value for classification is greeting greeting we would be going to handle greeting node else we would be going to handle rag node so how is this defined in the add conditional edge we're calling the function name decide next node and 
we are mentioning the two edges with, on which it can go from this particular point classify input depending upon the output of the decide next node similarly add conditional edge we are adding another conditional edge from handle rag so we are from handle rag we are calling the function check rag length if the length of the output the state variable uh, the length state variable that i defined earlier is greater than 30 then rerun rag as you can see that handle rag is again returned else by so basically how the flow is working first of all you go to the classification uh, you go to the classification node if the classification is greeting you go to handle gre handle greeting node and then eventually the node uh, the graph ends there because we have mentioned an edge handle greeting end now if the classification is not greeting it goes to handle rag and then within handle rag if the length uh, once the out we get the output if the length is greater than 30 we would be again going to handle rag so basically it's a self cycle that you can imagine we won't be coming out of handle rag until and unless the length variable is less than 30 and once the length variable is less than 30 we would be calling out the node by and eventually if you remember we again defined an edge node by to end and hence the graph would end i'd be showing two examples also to clarify how the flow works uh, this is how we have added nodes, we have added edges, we have added conditional edges also. Now we will be compiling this workflow and then in invoking a question. Question, Mehul developed which projects? Length 0. So here you can see that I am setting up uh, values for two state variables. So out of the five, I am providing uh, values for two state variables here. Question and length because question is a prompt basically for which the intent would be going. And now the output coming out is Mehul developed which projects? Classification is non-greeting. So basically the output that I'm getting from Langraph is the value for all the state variables. Do remember to add uh, the response that you wish to have as a separate variable. In our case, it was response. Classification, length, greeting, these are all the variable values that we got, but our main focus is towards response. Now the graph flows uh, look something like this. How it would have run for this particular, Mayhul developed which projects. Classify input, the sentiment for this particular prompt that is we will developed which projects would be non-greeting because it is a non-greeting message due to the first conditional edge it moves to the handle graph node now the first conditional edge if you remember was depending upon the classification value if the classification is equal to greeting go to handle greeting else go to rag hence it would have gone to handle rag as length is zero and the condition if you remember in the code use the first prompt and retrieve answer the total length retrieved would be greater than 30 in the first case. Now due to the second conditional edge, as you can see here, as the length value is greater than 30, what I'm assuming, eventually it would have again gone back to handle rag. And there is a condition, if else condition that I've mentioned there, here you can see, it would have run the second prompt this time, return total count only. After running the second prompt, what would have happened? is it would have again come to check rag length and this time the rag length would be less than 30 because you got the answer as 4 if you remember i will be showing you the response and hence it would have gone to the second condition that is by and then it would have ended and hence we got this particular output and hence the value for greeting has been updated as you can see because if uh, you would have been gone for the first case the value for greeting would have been hello how can i help you but once you run rag eventually the only exit gate is through by and hence you got the value the graph has finished now for a second case if you see hello bot I, if i input hello bot and length equals to zero the output would be something like this question hello bot classification is greeting response is none because it never ran rag in this case length is zero greeting hello how can i help you the flow here would be simpler classify input the sentiment would have been greeting hello bot the, it means it is a greeting Due to the first conditional edge, as we would have said, uh, classified the sentiment for hello bot would be greeting. We would be following the greeting node and eventually going through an end. So this is how, this is a very baseline example of how you can improve RAG. You can even implement more complex examples also, uh, where you can check out multiple criteria for improving your RAG result. But yes, you need to provide the criteria what you wish to have. And this is how you can create a baseline LANG graph to improve your RAG results. And I hope that you have understood the basics of Langra Wizard. Thank you so much.